everyone. Welcome to another Metastock webinar. We're excited to have you here today. Today uh, we have Steve Bigelow here with us who's going to be talking about it with us about candlestick power pattern trade identification. I'm going to try and say that quick five times. Um, welcome. We're glad to have you here. My name is Kelly Clement. I will be your YouTube host today. I will be in the background running everything, making sure everything's running smoothly. Uh, in on the other side, we have Jeff Gibby, who's going to be your your webinar host, along with our presenter Steve Bigelow. So we're going to be getting started in about five minutes here. I'm just going to go check, make sure everything's running okay, and I'll be back with you in just a few moments. But as you come into the room, say hello, tell us who you are, where you're coming in from. Hello, Vincenzo. Great to have you here for another Metastock webinar. Uh, we'll be back in just a second. Okay, it looks like we're looking pretty good. Uh, we're just gonna get started here in just a moment. Uh, while we are waiting, let me see if I've got this loaded up here. All right, well, it doesn't look like I have what I had wanted to show you loaded up. But anyway, so if you are new to Metastock, welcome. We are purveyors of technical analysis and charting software. If you're familiar with Metastock, we are so glad you're here uh, on both sides. You're here to learn about uh, candlestick charting with Steve Bigelow, or you're here to learn about the markets in general, you're in the right place. Uh, we're going to get started in about three minutes here. I've got a few things to cover with you, but I'll be right back for that. Okay, just checked in with Steve and Jeff. Um, as always, Steve's at his best. We're ready for Steve. Uh, we're gonna be on here in about two minutes. Now, just to let you know, um, coming up on Monday, we do have our Traders Summit coming up. So if you want to learn more about that, you can actually just go to, I'm just gonna bring up the web here. Uh, you can actually go to metastock.com now, if you go to metastock.com, it's not gonna show me like that on the website, it'll show a banner, and you can just click on that home site, that uh, webpage banner right there, register now for the Trader Summit, and it will take you to a page to show you everything that's coming up with that summit. 
Uh, I'm not sure where that's broken. Sorry about the, the weird thing there. Anyway, uh, visit the page for the Trader Summit. Just go to metastock.com, click on the Trader Summit, and you can see that, uh, that page right there. Um, so I'm gonna go do my final checks, get everything ready for the webinar. Again, as you come in, say hello. Tell us where you're coming in from. We're here in beautiful, cold Salt Lake City today where it's, uh, it is very chilly. So anyway, uh, I'm just gonna do those final checks, be right back with you, and we'll get this ball rolling. everyone, again, welcome today to today's presentation with Steve Bigelow, Candlestick Power Trade Identification. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, Jeff. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's Jeff Gibby uh, with Metasack. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for coming. It's good to see you today. I hope you had a good day. And uh, again, it's good to see you. Uh, let's start with where we always start our legal disclaimer. So, uh, today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. And Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions made with the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we have a great guest today. Steve Bigelow is um, somebody that we've been working with for decades now. Uh, uh, and um, I love the patterns that he's going to show, the, the stuff that he has to talk about, the jokes he's going to tell. One of our best presenters, very, very good partner of ours, has been with us again for a number of years. And I consider him a, a really good friend of mine. So uh, if, as we're going today and you're watching, oh, oh, a few things before we get Steve on here. If you're watching on YouTube, if you'd hit like and subscribe, it helps a great deal. We really appreciate that. If you have questions uh, while we're going, uh, just type them in into the chat area. Steve's really good at picking up on them. If you're watching them as, uh, hey, Richard, uh, if you're watching them on YouTube uh, as we go, I will pass those on to Steve uh, uh, during, as we go. So. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get Steve on here. Uh, Steve, how are you doing? Okay, well, my uh, to share my webcam. There we yeah, go. I, okay. You're coming through? All I right, also good. Sent, I also sent the screen share over to you. Oh, that's right. we got to do this again. Yeah. Show my screen. And Perfect. That's the, we got it? Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm here if you need me. Uh, I'm gonna get out of the way though. All right, thank you, Jeff. Um, welcome everybody. Like doing these sessions because uh, uh, it's just, before candlesticks came along, I was the worst investor in the world. But then when I found candlestick analysis, which I didn't pay attention to for months after somebody dropped some information on my desk, and said, you were a stockbroker. What do you think of candlesticks? And I figured anything as sophisticated sounding as candlesticks wasn't worth the time and effort. But they kept badgering me. So finally, I picked up the first thing that really kind of impressed me was this all makes sense. And the more I learned candlestick analysis, the more sense it made to the point where I constantly tell people that 
you shouldn't be taught how to invest based upon Wall Street's theory that you find good companies with good management, good sales growth, blah, 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 and you'll make money. That doesn't work. What works is the candlestick signals and patterns that actually show you what investors are doing. So I've written three books on candlestick analysis. They're easy to read and very understandable because candlestick analysis is very understandable. So what I discovered was that out of the 50 or 60 candlestick signals in the candlestick universe, you only need to learn 12, these 12, because not only do they occur 99.9% .9 of the time, but they're the ones that produce the most relevant uh, analysis of a price move. And the price move includes everything. It's not, candlestick analysis is not regulated to stocks. It is the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. Uh, and it could be on anything, stocks, bonds, futures, currency, tulip bulbs, anything that has fear and greed in it. So if you just learn the 12 major signals, basically six longs and six shorts, you're gonna have a very strong grasp of what moves prices. Number one, because the Japanese rice traders have had 400 years of identifying these signals and patterns, and they tell us what created those signals and patterns, what the investor sentiment was. When you have those two facets in your mind, visually and understanding why the signals are occurring, you've got the same grasp of identifying price moves as somebody that's been investing in the markets for 50 years. So it's very simple. The Japanese rice traders say, if you see a candlestick reversal signal in the overbought area, there's a high probability you're gonna be in a downtrend. You're gonna find these charts are extremely, not simple, but uh, not cluttered up. We've, um, and as I go through there, through this, we've got a couple indicators that enhance the returns of, uh, uh, or the, not really enhance, enhance the probabilities of a signal. And basically the signal is that if you see a sell signal confirmed and it closes below the T-line, the T-line being the exponential move, eight exponential move on average, your probabilities are extremely high that you're now in a downtrend. So let's see if I can get, so the T-line is, works in conjunction with candlestick signals. Candlestick signals are the most accurate, let me say it this way, the most viable indicator. I mean, it's been around uh, for 400 years and investor sentiment does not change. It won't change from last week, last month, last decade, last century, and it won't change next week, next month, next century. Candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. That's what moves prices. Prices don't move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. And the T-line acts like, or acts like it has Fibonacci characteristics, which basically says, if you see a candlestick buy signal, and a close above the T-line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Now, the reason this is important is because if any of you were like me, that would rarely have a good profit in a trade, what's our first inclination? Oh man, I'm gonna take profits because I sure look, would look stupid if it turned around and I let all those profits disappear. Well, now, instead of just taking profits because you have profits, you can use this indicator, the T-line, that acts like a natural support and resistance level of human nature. So here's the most powerful statement of this whole presentation. If you see a candlestick buy signal in conjunction with a T-line, that combination dramatically improves your probabilities that you're gonna be in the right trade and not get out too soon.
It also tells you if you get into a trade and it immediately comes back below the T-line, you get back out right away. It didn't work. So here's a good chart to show that on our charts, we have the 200 and the 50 simple day moving average. The reason for that is every major money manager around the world uses those moving averages to make their decisions about their portfolio, which means every trader in the world has those on their charts. The, we don't use those to make our decisions. We use those to see what everybody else's decisions are uh, at those levels. I've also got the 34 EMA, which works reasonably well. And that's the nice thing about a candlestick chart. The most compelling aspect of a trend reversal is the signal itself. Anything you add onto that, onto the chart after that, should help out the probabilities of being in the right trend. So there is a very strong truism that if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, I mean, there was so many times I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to take profits because that's a sell signal. But I know now not to do anything until I see a lower open and a close below the T-line. That I was, uh, I guess I'll back up here a little bit. I was the worst investor in the world before Candle 6 came along. I was a stockbroker for eight years, got out of the business because I realized that brokerage firms had no more idea about what made prices go up or down. But when candlesticks came along, it said, I kept thinking, this makes sense. So now, if I use that basic rule, first of all, I started turning my investing around from being the worst investor in the world to where I was kind of making good, decent money. But then when the T-line was applied to our charts, it became much stronger uh, probability. So the same, so this is something you always want to keep in mind. And I tell people, don't be afraid to put this on your chart and use it. I mean, it works. Shoot, I always tell people the first time I had sex, I was so afraid. But then again, it was dark and I was all by myself. But here is a the most powerful statement. If you see a candlestick buy signal to close above the T-line, the probabilities are extremely strong. You're in an uptrend. Same scenario on the downside. If you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, you can stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T-line. Same truism. If you're in an uptrend, got good profits, and then you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line, you take your profits because the probabilities have gone against you with a great accent on the fact that you're now probably in a downtrend. So this becomes relatively simple. If you see an a candlestick sell signal. This is an evening star signal, one of your 12 major signals. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you've got questions as we go along, put them in here. I'll answer them as, as, as we go along. If it's something that's too difficult, I will uh, I'll, uh, say, I'll address it later at the end. But Notice the sell signal in the overbought condition. Now I use stochastics as my overbought. If it's above 80, it's in the overbought area. If it's below 20, it's in the oversold area. The Japanese rice traders had a very simple philosophy. If you saw a candlestick buy signal in the oversold area, the probabilities are pretty good that you're now in a reversal uptrend. If you see a candlestick sell signal in the over bought area, probabilities are pretty strong. That uptrend's over, start looking for a downtrend. Then how long did you hold that downtrend? You stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal to close above, above the T-line. And I should mention there is one caveat to that, that the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability is going to come back and test it. The T-line is the eight exponential move and average. This line right here. So what we look for is high probability trade setups. 
And one of our major signals or patterns is the J hook pattern. There's three of them, the J hook, what we call the J hook plus and the bobble breakout. These are all high probability factors of what human nature does. So the J hook pattern looks like this. It has a strong price move and it does this little J hook pattern. Now we can see it much better because usually it comes up and pulls back and the T line becomes a very effective uh, analysis of what, what uh, we're supporting. So I didn't know I had all that. So there's a good measuring device on the J hook pattern. Wave one and wave three will usually be about the same magnitude. So this helps even in a trade setup that if you missed wave one and you saw the J-hook pattern setting up, at least you could calculate what the uh, percent return will be in wave three. So the reason this is just a J-hook pattern is you can see how it pulled back. It reversed up here, pulled back, and then right here on the T line, it started back up. Now, why is that still good? Because we have the T-line on our chart. Nobody has the T-line on their chart. Nobody uses, a, at least statistically, zero uh, percentage of all investors out there use the T-line. So we've got a great advantage that if we see wave one and we see a pull back and start curling up, we know what to expect. We can either be buying right here. This is called a doji sandwich. This is one of the signals that we teach people in our chat room uh, or on our website. You have a bullish day, then a doji. The doji rule is the price will usually move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So if it opens positive, it tells us immediately it's going to trade positive. And the likelihood of this candle right here is going to be the same magnitude as this candle right here with the little doji sandwiched in between. And the result of a doji sandwich is a high probability of more upside. So if we see this setting up with a high probability of more upside, we can already see that visual J hook pattern setting up. We can either be buying here or we can be buying here as it comes up through uh, the last resistance level. So this is not rocket science. This is what I keep reiterating when I do these sessions. This is not rocket science. This is the reoccurring patterns of human nature. Does the EMA work as well? Uh, David, the, uh, it, it doesn't really matter. The eight EMA has worked extremely well. So if you want to try the nine simple or the 10 simple or whatever strikes your fancy, go ahead and use it. But the eight EMA works extremely well. And you'll probably see on some of these charts how it actually touches, how often it actually touches the eight EMA, which is relevant because nobody has the T line on their chart. So the fact that it comes right back to that level and bounces up or bounces down is another indication that it acts like a natural support and resistance level of human nature. So here's why we teach people the 12 major signals. There's your doji gap up. That's your best friend. The reason we call it your best friend is because the probabilities are extremely strong. You're going to be in an uptrend, number one. And number two, it's going to be extremely strong in that uptrend. And then notice the nature of the pullback. Hold on, let's see. What is the measure of the T-line and what time frame is it used? All these charts are called fractal, which means this could be a 10-minute chart, a one-minute chart, an hourly chart, a weekly chart, a daily chart. They're all the same. The T-line, as well as the 50 on the 10-minute chart, works just as effectively uh, as on the daily or monthly, whatever time frame you're trading. Um, 
Uh, whoops. Got to expand the question box. Okay, oh, there's. Thank you. In, do the other time frames have any influence or too low to trade? No. I used to trade the E minis off the one minute, three minute, 10 minute chart. I usually trade soybeans, cattle, the dollar now off the 10 minute chart. And then when I'm ready to buy, I'll flip down to the five minute chart to make sure the 10 minute chart is still confirming. Again, it. Everything is, uh, again, the uh, all uh, the illustration of all the buying and selling decisions for any time frame. So this could be a one minute chart, a 10 minute chart, a daily chart. Can you define sell signal? Yes. This right here would be a sell signal. There's your doji in the overbought area followed by a bearish candle. That's telling you you've got a sell signal. I'll show you more sell signals as we go through here. So this is a buy signal. This is your doji in the oversold area gapping up. And notice how it gapped up. It gapped up and closed above the T-line. Notice the pullback. This is why when we teach everybody how to look at, a, at the signals, notice the pullback or doji type days, very indecisive. What's that imply? That the sellers aren't really selling off. Now, here's your next buy signal. There's a kicker signal, which is your strongest of the candlestick signals. And if we see that kicker signal closing back up above the T-line, what can we assume? Well, here's wave one, here's wave two. If this is starting wave three, it should be the same magnitude as wave one. What's our next likely target? Up here at the 200-day moving average. So this is not because you have to know formulas or numbers or anything else. All we have to do is identify the same signals and patterns that uh, the Japanese rice traders have illustrated to us for 400 years. So, and I always uh, bring up the fact that the Japanese rice traders did not become wealthy. They became legendarily wealthy. They were the financial powerhouse in Japan for centuries, trading the most basic of all commodities, rice. So here's the analysis. There's your best friend signal. What does that imply? A very strong uptrend. Look what happened here, kind of congestion, consolidation. But notice where they could not close this. They could never close it back below the T-line. Notice where the uptrend started again. As soon as it pulled back and the T-line caught up, then it moved up strong. Now, why do we know that's a strong pattern? Because look what it did today. The market opened up, went down 300 points. The NASDAQ down 150. This one opened and that strength that was already illustrated in this is, uh, was continuing. So here's another aspect to candlestick patterns. Not only does it tell you what direction it's going, but the magnitude of the move is gonna be much greater than just a mere uptrending stock in a uptrending market. If we can calculate that move, we can calculate what this move is gonna be. And then additionally, if the market all of a sudden turns and goes against you, or go, goes the opposite direction, Usually a pattern is not going to immediately roll over. It gives you a little bit more time to get out of the position because this is a buildup of investor sentiment that created the pattern in the first place. So the J-hook plus is just a J-hook pattern that they pull back right to a level that everybody else is watching. This is called a left-right combo. You can see the doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. Now, anytime you have a doji involved with a combination signal, it's usually gonna be a little bit more uh, potent. So we call this two plus two analysis. 
you can identify exactly where a buy signal has occurred. You can identify what pattern is setting up. So what would we worry about or what would we anticipate here at the 200? Well, if this is wave one and this is your left right combo, a very strong reversal signal and they gap it up, more than likely, we're gonna watch to see what if we get a sell signal here and if not, we know that this wave and this wave are gonna be the same. So if you are on a 10 minute chart and you are a day trader watching two, three, five minute charts for entry and exit, does the 10 minute candle represent the direction? Uh, well, it's formed, it takes four, 10 minutes to form. Now, obviously you're gonna have two five minute candles to uh, form that, that 10 minute chart. So if you see that your 10 minute chart is in the oversold area, and you're starting to see a potential reversal signal. Well, then you flip to your five minute chart and say, <clears throat> do we see a reversal signal here? And is the five minute candles telling us that 10 minute candles are gonna continue? Again, this is, oh, I think we even have a day trading session coming up uh, on the 21st, uh, I guess on the, what is today? No, those were, Oops, I've got the wrong calendar. I think around the second week in February, we're gonna be doing a day trading session, which will be in uh, combination with trading commodities intraday. Uh, Paul, on our website, again, I've been, our website's been up over uh, for 20 years. Also have a, uh, uh, training video on there in our uh, uh, services and products and services tab that shows you about the eight uh, candlestick patterns. And again, remember, Elliott Wave showed us that prices moved in patterns. That was from 50 years ago. All that was illustrating is what everybody knew that prices did move in patterns. The Japanese rice traders knew that hundreds of years ago, that human nature works the same way uh, time after time. So now where was I? Oh, so the J hook plus is just the fact that we can see where it was supporting. AMAT came up through what normally happens when they come up through a resistance level. First thing they do is they come back to test it to see if it's gonna act as support. Well, we could see immediately it was gonna act as support because there was your morning star signal bouncing off the 50, doing a J hook plus. So where was our next target? Well, if this is wave one, there's our next target up here. Now that helps whether you're trading stocks, or even options, especially options, but it's getting you in right at the right time and knowing when it's time to start taking profits. Uh, Peter, it all depends on what your time frame that you trade. Now I trade not real active as I did in my younger days, which all my days were younger. Um, again, when I was younger, I used to trade off the one minute three minute, 10 minute chart combination. Now I use the 10 minute chart as my bellwether because I've got so many other things going on uh, either in the chat rooms during the day or scanning for the next trades. So I can't sit there and concentrate on the trade. So I trade slower, which means I use probably a, a five minute, 10 minute, 15 minute chart combination uh, so I may only make two or three trades a day uh, or I might've made 15 or 20 using the one minute, three minute, 10 minute combination. So if you're a day trader and you trade active, you use the lower time frames. If you're a day trader, but only wanna trade once or twice a day, maybe use a 10 minute, 15 minute, 30 minute combination. The nice thing about candlestick charts is you can, easily test in the matter of 15 minutes to see what three chart combinations would work the best for you for the time frame you're you're trading. So again, 
Notice how the morning star signal formed right off the 50, doing a little J hook pattern, telling us our next target was up here. So anytime we see this, that tells us we've got wave one, wave two, a bounce off the 50. If it comes back up through this level, I don't know what it did today, you can start buying because that tells you wave three is in progress. Same thing on URNM. Wave one up through the uh, 200, pulls back, does a piercing signal, and starts back up. So what would we expect out of this price move? Wave three is going to be the same magnitude as wave one. Now, does that always happen? No, it basically puts the probabilities in your favor that that could happen. But remember what the most important element on a candlestick chart is, the signals themselves. So if this got up here and did a big bearish engulfing signal, that's telling me that this didn't work. I could close out the trade. All right, Peter just used the you know, the time frames that work work best for you. All right, so this is what happens on a J hook plus or J hook pattern. Notice what this one did today. There was your pullback right to the 200, came back up. There was your little left right combo. When it started trading positive, what was the anticipation if you were trading this one? Better want to, we want to see what happens here at the breakout level. Now, I always ask the rhetoricals, I don't know whether I make the rhetorical statement. Do you always get big price moves like this? No, but you're always putting yourself in situations where the probabilities are much greater that you're in a situation like this just based upon what human nature normally does. Can this be applied to futures? Yes, remember, um, this candlestick signals were created by the most boringest future in the world, trading future, rice. Again, you can apply this to futures, currencies, stocks, bonds. It's not a measure of a, a market. It's the measure of human nature that is trading in that market. So this produces extremely high probability day trade results that if you can see a pattern setting up, you know what it should be doing. And do you always get this big breakout? Not always, but the probabilities of being in those trades are huge compared to just being in a slow uptrending stock. The next J hook pattern is what we call the bobble breakout. And that's the same pattern, except it comes up to a level that everybody's watching. In this case, the 50 day moving average pulls back and then as soon as it comes up here, what do you think everybody's, what most people think? Boy, it's coming up through the 50. I'm gonna start buying because I wanna be buying if they're trading above the uh, uh, above the 50 day moving average. So we can be buying right here, knowing what it's doing because we know everybody else is piling in. Fruz, uh, that's exactly what uh, Jeff is going to show, how the meta stock, scans we've already built the all the formulas uh into the scans and i'm happy to say we're even now working together as far as getting statistical studies done as far as i've always told people that the best friend signal produces high probability results but i never knew what the statistical analysis was and so Metastock has the capability of formulating what those statistics are. So once we know we have a high probability trade set up, we know what our next analysis is. We can stay long until we see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. What's everybody watching? They can, you can see that when they came up to the 50, they started taking profits. 
Then they came back up through. When they came up through the 50, where was the next likely target? The 200. When they went through the 200, what they do now, there's a bullish engulfing signal right at the 200, open positive. So we got wave one, wave two, wave three, wave one, wave two, wave three. This is because human nature works the same way time after time. We just recommended going long on MSTR on this day, that if it came up through, we have a bobble breakout. It backed and filled today, but I think it actually closed positive. But again, we buy these because we know everybody's watching to see what's happening here. They're gonna take it higher. So here's what you can do just by having the visuals of human nature. This is a fry pan bottom, which we'll go into in a second. You can see it's a big rounding bottom that you wouldn't want to trade one way or the other. But as soon as it broke out, you had wave one. Now, the prerequisite for a J-hook pattern is a strong price move. So when you're coming out of a fry pan bottom, you have a strong price move. Notice where it pulled back to, right smack dab to the T-line. And now you're trading positive again. It back and filled today, but on positive trading, we'll still be buying this one if the markets start up tomorrow, because we know wave one, wave two, we can clearly see where they started buying wave three and where it broke out. They're just high probability results. There's there's nothing tricky about this. I was telling somebody the other day that I'm sure most of you in the past have always gotten inundated with promos that say, we're going to teach you the new secrets on how to make money or the new secret uh, strategies. Well, we could never do that with candlestick analysis because there's nothing secret about it. It's been out there for hundreds of years. All we're doing is learning to use it the uh, way the Japanese rice traders have shown us that prices usually move based upon human nature. Uh, stochastics are 1233 slow stochastics. And there's nothing, uh, nothing, I would say, tricky about that. I'm a swing trader, so most of my trades last anywhere from two to 10 trading days. When I first started learning candlesticks oh, 30 years ago, the norm was 14.55, but that seemed a little bit slow. So I sat one night, and this was just about the time that candlesticks uh, or charting came onto the internet. I just sat there and said, all right, let's try 14.33, 14.32, 13.51. And finally came up with 1233 that pretty much correlated with when you see saw buy signals in the oversold area or saw sell signals in the overbought area, but they work pretty close. So again, it comes back to that simple strategy that the Japanese rice traders uh, uh, profess is if you see a candlestick buy signal in the oversold area, you're probably in an uptrend. If you see a candlestick sell signal in the overbought area, you're probably starting a downtrend. So here is one, the one we were working on the statistics right now, the best friend signal. The best friend signal is a doji gap. Now in this case, it was a doji gap down. And this is where I always say, observe the obvious. Look where the doji hit, right smack dab on the 50 and then did a doji in the overbought area. What's that tell us about our probabilities immediately? They failed up here. And then what's the doji rule? The price is usually gonna move in the direction how they open after a doji. When it opened lower, that immediately told you if the doji rule is correct, which it's high percentage of the time it is, they're opening lower after hitting the, the uh, 50 and did a doji, where are they not going? They're not going up through there. They're still selling off this trend. So this is the analysis of what happens in human nature. If you see a day of indecision and they gap it up, 
and close above the T-line, you get ready to start buying because this illustrates there's been a drastic change of investor sentiment. That's how we got into AEHR. There was your best friend signal. There was your J-hook consolidation. And even today, let's see, did I, even today, where I showed earlier, they opened it and continued higher, even though the market was selling off all day before it came back. This is what we expect. So the reason that we want to learn what happens in human nature is there's tons of people who say, oh, I'm not going to chase this one. It's, uh, oh, it's up uh, whatever that was. 50%, 70%, whatever, 30%. One of the worst trading strategies you hear most people say, well, I'm going to wait for it to pull back so I can buy it. And the fallacy of that analysis is, what do you want to see on a bullish reversal signal? You want to see the bulls are still there. If they have enough strength or the bears have enough strength to push it back to a level, that means it's not a strong signal, number one. Number two, that's because you're anticipating your immaculate execution, which means it pulls back. And when you decide to buy it, it's going to turn right around and head back up because that's where you bought it. That is wishful thinking. And if you use that strategy, then you're going completely against what human nature does, that if there's a strong trend, you're going to be left behind if if you don't analyze what creates that strong trend. So we're looking for the high probability trade setups com confirmation, which means if we see a fry pan bottom, what do we want to see over here? We want to see this indecisive move now breaking back to the upside. What's this tell us? There's a slow buildup of investor sentiment. So we recommended this one the other day because there's your best friend signal that gapped up above the 50 day moving average and went positive. And our statistical analysis is if it trades positive, you've got a very high probability that it's gonna continue positive. Now you add that to the fact that you're coming out of a fry pan bottom, that's exactly what we're looking for coming out of a fry pan bottom is that great enthusiasm. Would confirmation be breaking the high and continuing with a bullish candle of breaking the high? Uh, yeah, if if it's a J-hook pattern, it's coming back up with that, at least that little high, um, that recent high. So here's the combination. You got a fry pan bottom and a best friend signal. Just the best friend signal alone tells you there's gonna be a strong move. And now it's enhanced by the fact that it's breaking out of a fry pan bottom. So anytime you see that fry pan bottom and you start seeing them gap up, again, look at the best friend signal here, where not only did they break out through the uh, fry pan bottom, but they broke through the uh, 200. Now we're looking at it as a fry pan bottom gapping up. That's exactly what we want to see. I know that there's a lot of money managers out there that say, uh, Oh, stay away from gaps. You don't know what they're doing. You want to get into the gaps when you know exactly what the uh, the patterns are telling you it's doing. I want to be buying the ones that they're trying to get in, coming out of a pattern with great enthusiasm. We took profits on this. Now, these were bad ticks yesterday. There was kind of a glitch in the markets, but it opened lower today. We took profits. But if you were buying a spread down here like we were, I forget what we did. I think we bought them for a dollar fifty-one. It was a thirty-five forty. Well, we sold them out. Oh no, it wasn't a ninety ninety-five. Well, we sold them out today for around three dollars and fifty cents. So um, this is where you can, knowing the direction, now you've got different strategies you can do. Whether you're buying calls or buying spreads or even doing credit spreads, you know at least the direction with a high degree of probability of what the prices are doing. So here's what we call the classic pattern. Fry pan bottom, strong price move. J hook pattern, strong price move. That's because a J hook pattern has a prerequisite of a 
strong price move, that's exactly what you get coming out of a fry pan bottom. So we can be buying right in here, knowing that wave three could be the same magnitude as wave one. You don't have to wait around or that's the wrong chart. But notice how you had the fry pan bottom and then they closed above the 50. So you could be buying on this day because what was it telling us? If the fry pan bottom was performing, number one, and number two, everybody else is watching to see what happens out of this dull trading. But they close above the T line, that's when they start coming in with great enthusiasm. So you've got just as many bearish patterns as you do bullish patterns. The dumpling top is the opposite of the fry pan bottom. And what do we expect coming out of a dumpling top? Look how they gapped it down. That's the force to the downside. A dumpling top, gapping it down. So we could be shorting right in here. And how long do we stay short? As long as it doesn't close back up above the T-line. So. I do a YouTube every Monday, oh, Thursday, and usually one over the weekend. And I had somebody say, well, you aren't proving that these signals work. I'm thinking, no, I don't have to prove these signals work. These signals work because we've had 400 years of analysis from the Japanese rice traders telling us they do work. All we're doing is trying to identify the signals that told us, or the Japanese rice told us there was a severe change of investor sentiment. The kicker signal. Notice how it opened here, closed here. The next day they gapped it up and went the opposite direction. How long did you hold on to this position? Well, that would have been a bad hair day, but what happened by the end of the day? They closed back up above the T-line, and if it opened positive the next day, what was it forming? A J-hook pattern right off the 200. And if this was wave one, this is where we start looking for sell signals. So I always go back to the simple analysis that prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. And that's all gra the graphics of candlesticks are, is what everybody's perception of that information they might be seeing. So this is why learning the 12 major signals is your basic ABCs of candlestick analysis. That's your hanging man signal. Now we held on to this one ever since it gapped up. This is called a double doji setup. Had a T-line crunch. Notice how they could never get through the down below the T-line as they uh, went up through the 50. Then they came up through the 200. Still no sell signals until right there. That's a hanging man signal. And there's the same simple rule of the hanging man. If it opens lower the next day and starts trading lower, take profits. That was the first break in the armor. And you can see why you want to get out of sig or out of patterns or signals when you see them occurring, because there's been a drastic change of investor sentiment. The T line being referred is no. The T line is the eight exponential moving average. This is your 50 day moving average, the blue line. This is your 200 day simple moving average. The T line acts like a natural support and resistance level of human nature. So the combination of seeing a buy signal and a close above the T line tells you can stay long until you see a sell signal and a close back below the T line. Is there a way to get notice of your YouTube videos? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I think once, uh, David, once you go to one. I know. <laughs> okay, you tell them. I can answer uh, that for you, Steve. All right. All they have to do is uh, go to one of your videos. So they'll search for it. And then if they like and they subscribe, YouTube should usually notify you. Yes. Yeah, I think that's the way it works that once you, Say, all right, I want to subscribe. 
but every time I put out a YouTube, you get an email notice or something that says it's out there. Let's see, all right, and so remember, the signals are relevant or we wouldn't be looking at them today. So even though the market finally turned around and came up, look what type of signal we had today and run. We did a doji gap down. Now we know what the trading strategy is. We already bought puts on this. What do we wanna see tomorrow? Well, if it opens lower, remember the doji rule. It's gonna move in the direction how they open after a doji. That means there's more downside. So what? What can we kind of anticipate would be our price move? There's wave one, there's wave two, failed right here at the 50, gap down again. It's pretty obvious who's winning the battle here. The bears are, that's a good bearish chart. And I didn't have time to put up today's market charts, but as you saw, the markets gap down today. I think the Dow actually gapped down I know the NASDAQ gapped down right to the T-line. And then even though it closed lower, the difference was it closed well above where it opened, so it was producing a bullish candle. And what's that kind of tell us immediately? That the bulls were still there. They opened it lower, but they were still buying after they opened. Um, how did you arrive at eight day? Uh, one of my first private training students came down from Anchorage, Alaska, and we sat in front of the screen for three days where I gave, usually gave my private training sessions, and he loved candlesticks. And, but he would go back and say, oh, I'm not getting this, I'm not getting this, and I'd help him along. And then about six weeks later, he uh, called back and said, put the eight exponential moving average on your chart. Now, again, the nice thing about candlestick charts is if somebody tells you to put the XYZ index on and it doesn't do you any good, take it back off because the, the more plain or the more simple you keep your charts, the more emphasis you're gonna re always remain on the reversal signals themselves. So I was making good money. Again, going from being the worst investor in the world to now pulling money out consistently but I was leaving a lot on the table. And once I put the candle or the T line on the chart, I saw how many times that as long as you were below the T line, you might see buying, but if it didn't close above the T line, you were still in a downtrend. Hey, Steve. Yep. Quick question from YouTube, if you don't mind. Don't mind at all. Alpha, uh, Alpha Diallo wants to know, uh, when you when you are trading, do you take trades with any of the patterns that show up? Oh, say that again. Okay, yeah, sure. When trading, do you take all the trades with any patterns that show up? Oh, no, that's another facet that we teach people on, on our website. And now our website is candlestickforum.com. I have a chat room, two chat rooms which usually has about 150, 160 people in there every day. The nice thing about it is you've got people all looking for the same patterns. So it kind of expedites your learning process that if you're learning candlestick signals and patterns, somebody might put out, uh, oh, oh, we got people in there that are very good at identifying the, the patterns. Like, this is a long answer to say, I can't trade all the patterns, but what we teach people is if you come up with a day at the end of the day, and I'll let you explain how to do the scanning process uh, when we're done here. But if I all of a sudden have 20 good chart patterns, then we have a very simple process of going through and cultivating down to the best three or four, and then looking for the appropriate open the next day. I don't know whether, oh, oh, so do I trade all the patterns? No, I can't handle all the patterns because on any given day, you've got 9,500 trading entities out there with the very simple scanning uh, techniques that we use 
and again, you've got the uh, a lot of the symbols and patterns built into Metastock already, so it's going to illustrate what they are. But if I come up with 20 good patterns, now we just cultivate through, and I've got a video that says, here are the top rank signals and patterns. I think we have 15 of them, with number one being the best friend signal. Now, that doesn't mean number 15 is bad. It just means they're all good. We just kind of quantified them. So if I've got 20 good ones, now I go back through and say, all right, do I have a strong signal? Do I have a kicker signal? Do I have a best friend signal? Now I can kind of pick out which ones are the, are the best. Um, do you use the 34 in conjunction with the 50 or which takes priority of most? Uh, they all work as, let's see, do I have the 34 on there? You can see, I think this is a 34, very light, but notice how they came right back to the 34 and went up, came right back to the 34 and went up. So it works well. And as I was saying before, if you have something and it doesn't really enhance your ability to see what is uh, improving your ability to, to uh, analyze the chart, take it back off because this is the most important factor is the signals themselves. Everything else just becomes a confirming indicator. So the difference between listening to somebody telling you that Apple is probably worth 180 that you should be buying the candlestick signals and patterns are telling you what investors are actually doing, not what the conjecture is. And again, this is all based upon evidence that has been dealt, developed over the last 400 years. It's not like this is all new modern stuff with computer generated signals and patterns. So again, the reason we like Metastock charts is because not only does it find the best trades for you? But Jeff would kind of explain to you that uh, uh, that you also have a description of what those signals and patterns are. So it increases your learning process. Do you do anything with insider buying uh, info for a webinar 12 today? What happened to it? Do you do anything? Okay, I, think, uh, I think that's a two-part question. Uh, we did have a webinar that uh, we had a bit of a scheduling conflict that's actually next Wednesday at noon. Oh, okay. That was the Zenith webinar. Um, in terms of the other question, uh, do you look at insider uh, trading information at all, Steve? No. We're not interested in whether there's a massive short position or insider trading that's all gonna be built into the candlestick chart itself. If you've got massive short positions in a stock, but it's not being bought, it doesn't mean anything. What we're looking for is what prices are actually moving. So everything, and a lot of people say, well, do you take into account the fundamentals? No, we're not fundamental analysts. What is built into a candlestick chart is everybody that is doing fundamental analysis, making their decisions of whether they want to be buying and selling. That's already built into the decision making process. All we're doing is analyzing what everybody's decision process is. Um, when I first uh, started teaching this you know, decades ago, I would always get the question of, or I would always say, well, I'd ask people, why isn't everybody using candlesticks? Because it's so so much common sense. And the answer was that there was usually um, too many to learn and they didn't always work. Well, I kept thinking if they didn't work, we wouldn't be looking at them today. And a lot of people would say, oh, we've got them on our charts. We just don't know how they work. And I always kind of illustrated that as being something like the uh, young Indian that left the reservation, went to Harvard, graduated top of his class. Then he went on to Wall Street, was making millions of bucks when the tribe called him up and said, hey, we want you to come back and be chief of the tribe. And his heritage was much 
more important than making money. So the first day he was back on the reservation in his teepee, all the elders came filing in and said, uh, how much wood should we collect for the summer or this, for the winter? He, he said, I have no idea, come back in an hour. So they all filed out. He flipped open his cell phone, called the local weather station and goes, what do, what do your indicators look like for the winter? And they said, oh, about the same as last year. So he called everybody back in and said, uh, go out and collect the same amount of wood we had last year but collect about two weeks extra just to be safe. They all did. So for him to be safe, he called up the weather station a few days later and said, all right, your indicators look all right. And they go, no, it's gonna be a little bit colder than what we thought. And he goes, oh man. So he called everybody back in and said, go out and collect another two weeks worth of wood. And they all grumbled and headed out and did it. And so a few days later, he called up the uh, station again and said, all right, is everything all right? And he goes, no, it's going to be a little bit colder yet. And he goes, man. So he called everybody in and said, listen, go out and collect six weeks worth of wood so we don't have to keep going through this. And they all grumbled, which you're probably all doing right now, listening to this long story. And so they collected six weeks worth of wood and he called up the station again and said, all right, Everything all right? And they go, oh, no, we're going to have one of the worst winters we've ever had. And the young Indian chief said, what the heck is wrong with your computer indicators? You can't get anything right. And you go, oh, we don't use computer indicators. We watch the Indians. The more wood they collect, the colder it's going to be. So if you don't know what your sig signals are or how they're developed, they don't do you any good. So um, with that, Jeff, I'll let you. Uh, oh, is there any more questions? I think we got them all. Let me double check. Uh, let me check the YouTube again real quick. But I think we, I think we hit them all. Uh, you're always really good with the questions. Nope. I think we're good. We're caught up on questions, except for all the right, scanning then. one, which is the one I'm going to show. All so. right. You, yep. Show them the, the scanning capabilities. Oh, uh, one question. Last minute, David's coming in at the at the at the buzzer here. Do you hang on to trades where the candle sometimes peaks below or above the T-line? I have a, a trouble with the difference between a pullback and a reversal. Uh, yes, if you use the basic rule that if you see a close below the T-line, but it's not a reversal signal, it may just be a down day, then I have a very simple rule. It better open positive and trade positive the next day to continue the uptrend. If it opens lower, close it out. Also, there's the caveat that the further away you are from the T-line, so if you've got a good strong uptrend and then you see a sell signal, but you're way up above the T-line, you close the position because more than likely it's gonna come back and test the T-line. Then you can always buy back if it, at the T-line, it does a J-hook pattern and starts back up again. Do you trade real money? Trade? Oh, you trade no. real money for anyone? No, I am out there right now. Uh, uh, I used to consult for some uh, uh, money managers years ago, and I'm starting to do that again because I've seen. I don't want to sound critical, but. You look at some of these analysts that the talking heads on on these news stations i can't imagine how they stay in business i saw one guy say the other day that as long as you don't sell a position you haven't lost any money and i'm thinking well if i handed you a million dollars account and today it's worth six hundred thousand you've lost me money so anyways i but no i i would rather teach people how to manage your own money because there's only one person really interested in the money that you're going to make and that's you so this is not difficult stuff this is stuff that has or signals and patterns that have worked consistently for hundreds of years and they will work consistently for the next hundred years what ema is priority 34 or 50. Uh, the 50 is a simple moving average. That's because that's what everybody uses. The 34 is an EMA because it works reasonably well. Uh, I was going to, oh, we were supposed to have a link. I was, 
Oh, boy. Jeff, I was going to give everybody a, a free sample, a two-week free trial to our chat rooms and our picks in kind of a short two-minute video format, analyzing what the market has done. Now, today the market closed back up above the T-line. So the assumption is we're still in an uptrend. But I'll put out two or three stock picks, not to have people to have stock picks, but it's done in a video format. So you're still learning why that is being recommended. Because as you know, if you just tell somebody what to do without them understanding why, they don't learn anything. It's kind of like the cop that's standing on the street corner and he sees this drunk weaving down the street, blows his whistle, pulls the guy over, looks in the back seat, and there's a penguin sitting there. And he goes, what the heck are you doing with a penguin in your back seat? Drunk said, oh, I found him out on the street, and I don't know what to do with him. And the cop said, well, take him to the zoo. And the drunk said, oh, I didn't think of that. Well, the next day, the cop's standing on the street corner, and here comes this drunk weaving down the street again. He blows his whistle, pulls the guy over, walks up to the car, and the penguin's sitting in the back seat. He goes, I thought I told you to take the penguin to the zoo. And the drunk said, I did. He liked it so much. Today, we're going to a baseball game. So if you don't understand why you're doing something, you don't really learn anything. So with that, Jeff, I'll let you show people how to, oh, now let me finish my thought. If you want to email abraham at candlestickforum.com, is that something you could type in? Mm -hmm. I'm doing it right now. And tell them that I uh, said that everybody could have a free trial for two weeks. I call this our uh, horseradish uh, promotion because growing up here in Pittsburgh, H.J. Hines became famous because his horseradish he put into a clear bottle, which at that time it was green bottles, and he showed how good a quality it was and let people taste it. And that's how his business just skyrocketed. So that's what we call the horseradish. I'm going to put it in a clear bottle, come taste it, because everything that is built into candlestick analysis is common sense. And I guarantee you, it will change your perspective of what moves prices out there. So with that, Jeff, thank you very much. Thank you, I'll, Steve. Appreciate yep. it. All right. Uh, very good. Uh, very good class. Um, before you go, I just want to say thank you for all the work you've done with us over the years, all the all the programming. Um, uh, I really appreciate you. Thanks for coming in again. Well, thank you. Okay, very good. All right, everybody, have a good evening. Let me go ahead and kind of uh, just take the control here in the reins. I do. I did promise that we would talk about scanning and how it works and that kind of stuff. This is one of our most popular add-ons, and people love it. So let me go ahead and kind of just share my screen. And um, uh, in order to do that, I need to push this button. I need to push this button. And now uh, you should be able to see my screen. So uh, this is the product that we worked on with Steve. It's been a, uh, it's been around for quite some time now. I remember we're on our second version of it. It's been uh, one of our most successful modern add-ons for Metastock, and uh, people really, really like it. I'm really, really proud of the work that we did with this. What we did um, was so we. we do a ton of work with Steve. We were we were doing a, uh, some similar work yesterday with kind of pulling together some statistics on the patterns and uh, with Steve. And it re was reminded me of all of the times that I, all of the hours that I spent with Steve and uh, our our programmer, kind of figuring out exactly how to program some of these patterns. Like some of them are super easy, like Doji followed by a best uh, doji followed by a gap up as your best friend pattern very very simple to code so it's something you can do very very easily some of them are a little bit more subjective like when you start to talk about the j hooks and those fry pan bottoms and those took a little bit more time but i'm glad we spent the time on it because we created a very what well, like i said a very successful add-on uh, the other thing that's notable about it is it's actually been reviewed. The first version uh, was reviewed by Dennis Peterson in Stocks and Commodities um, when we first released it many years ago, and he did a very, very good review of it. The second, the, when we released the version two, it was actually re, uh, reviewed by Barbara Starr, uh, and she, she really liked it as well. So it's been reviewed two times. Here's what it does. I'm gonna just kind of walk you through it, show you how the scanning works. It's not gonna take this very long. 
but I want to, I don't want to also, I want to show how nice it is. So all these patterns, uh, I believe there's about 20 something on this screen and about 11 or 12 on the next screen are identified with the software. So here's all of your multiple day patterns. We've kind of divided them up into price categories. You can see the price pattern ones right here. You've got your Doji Dynamites, your Power Signals, and your J-Hooks. All of those are automatically identified. And I'll show you what that means. In addition to those, there's some single bar signals like your Doji and your Bullish Engulfing, and those are identified as well. And you can scan for those as well. So if I, um, I just happen to have a chart open, look at that. <laughs> but if I go into Metastock, I can actually show you how this works in Metastock. So if we just open up the Metastock with the uh, template, we call it a template, but it just applies all the indicators that he's been talking about. And it also displays all of those patterns. So I've talked about this several times, but uh, back in October, we kind of had this huge, it's October 13th, we had this huge left-right bullish combo. Uh, literally, so far, it's marked the bottom of the market, but one of the biggest left-right bullish combos I've ever seen on a chart. And I, I had a really, really strong feeling after seeing this huge left-right bullish combo that we had set at least a, a bottom for a while. And that's that's held true, Nan, for a while, right? So, But you can kind of see where we're kind of getting a bearish engulfing here, a bearish engulfing here, a bearish engulfing here. Got a bullish engulfing followed by a bit of a move up, but you can kind of see how these patterns actually work. Here you had a T-line crunch, here you had a bearish engulfing. So all of them are labeled for you. They're automatically kind of defined every single one of these. If I have a question about how they work or how you can actually apply them or what they mean, um, I can actually open up like what we call a commentary dialogue in Metastock. And I'm gonna do that just to kind of give you an idea of how this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit view expert commentary. And what I'm going to do, uh, when I do that, notice right here, there's a little bit of a triangle. That's the date it's pointing at. There's not any real candles uh, or real patterns that are kind of being identified here. Uh, but if I can go back, and I'm going to go back to like this recent bullish kicker that we had uh, right before that nice little move, upward move, okay? And it's going to, this commentary, what it's going to do is it's going to define it for me. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of move this in. I'm not going to read it all out to you, but well, actually I will because it's only a paragraph of test. The bullish kicker uh, presents consistent trading opportunities for long positions. This signal is even more powerful when it forms at a major support level. The larger the dark candle at the bottom is, the more powerful the reversal. Your exit strategy should be swift upon any trading below the open of the previous day's candle body. So it's telling you, okay, this looks like a good long signal. Uh, one of the exit strategies, if this closes or if this trades below, then the signal's negated. So it's actually giving you some advice in terms of how to trade it. You'll also notice there's some enhancements here, like it says if the kicker signal forms at a major support level. Um, in this case, it's forming at all three of the moving averages that he's looking at here. Uh, it's uh, more powerful, and the bigger the dark candle at the bottom, the more powerful the reversal. So the idea with the enhancements is we're, I'm gonna show you how to scan. And if you scan, <laughs> You want to, you're going to count a bunch of them. Actually, let's run the scan now. The enhancements just helps you say, okay, well, uh, here's how I decide. Somebody in YouTube asked earlier, um, do you take all the signals or do you decide on a few of them? And what I like to do um, is just scan the whole universe, actually kind of look at the ones that I like and pick maybe two or three that I want to trade that look most promising. These enhancements that you're seeing are designed to help you show, help show you what's most promising. So uh, they're very, very good, and that's the whole idea for it. Well, let me show you how the scan works. I'm just going to hold, hold and open it up. Those patterns that you kind of saw on the grid, the Doji Dynamite, the J-Hook, the major patterns, the power signals, they're all different categories here, as well as like a universe uh, scan. To give you an idea of how easy it is to do, I'm just going to run the Doji Dynamite scan. I'm going to highlight over it, and you'll see right here in the pop-up text that it's looking for Doji at the top. Doji Best Friend, which is one of my favorite patterns, the left and uh, right bullish and bearish combos, and you can read the rest of the list. So that's the one I'm gonna just show you how to run, okay? Now, one of the advantages that we have um, with our data supplier, Refinitiv, is all of the data markets that we cover. So if you're watching this from um, Australia, you wanna be able to look at all the Australian stocks you can, India is a huge market for us, London, Europe. The, basically, with the data that we get from uh, uh, from, uh, from Refinitiv, um, 
there's 321,120. You're never going to use all that data, but it's available for you. So uh, regardless of the markets, if you're in Asia, if you're in Europe, if you're in uh, wherever you might be, if you're interested in FX, if you're interested in futures, you'll be able to do this. And you'll be able to do the same analysis no matter what the instruments you're interested in. That's a huge advantage we have with the Refinitiv that we use for the data feed. OK, what I'm going to do just to show it to you, though, is I'm going to come down to this index constituent list. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a scan real quick quickly of the Dow Jones Industrials, all 30 of those stocks, the S&P 500, and I could I could do also the NASDAQ 100, uh, but we'll just go ahead and do that. So um, I'm just going to scan those lists. Uh, the, the scans that I like to run is actually uh, one of the lists, if you're an options trader, um, is like the optionables list. Somebody's got a live mic. I'm going to turn it off real quick. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so as an optionable trader, what I can do is I actually can scan all of the optionables. There's about 5,500 of them or so that are optionable stocks. So if I want to trade options, this is a good way to identify that underlying that I want to look at if I wanted to scan all those options. So as you can see right here, one of, it's gone through 503 stocks, which is the S&P 500 and the Dow, and there's a lot of overlap between those lists. Uh, it's rejecting about 95% of the stocks you see right there. And that's one of the things that I want to be able to do as a trader, because for me, I stay really, really busy at work. And I want to be able to, I try and kind of just pack in all of the trading that I want to do for uh, in the last 15 minutes of the trading. And that includes running the scans. So if I can very, very quickly go through and out of these 500 stocks, only look at the 26 that I'm interested in, that's a really, really good way. Again, what I want to do is I want to focus on just the, the I don't want to necessarily look at all 500 stocks. I keep an idea of what the market is looking like, but I want to be able to focus on the ones that have an opportunity and ignore all the ones that don't have an opportunity. So out of the 500, there's 26. Right here, you can see the patterns. You've got Doji at the top. You've got Doji best friend, left, right bullish, left, right bearish, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if I wanted to find the Doji best friend, uh, which again is one of my favorite patterns, all I had to do is actually just sort this column. So I'm going to do that. And if it has a one in this column, that's going to have a doji best friend. Now, none of them did. Okay. So none of these had a doji best friend. So none of them had a doji by a follow by a gap up. So if that was the primary pattern that I'm looking for, well, I could expand the list out, but none of the actual stocks. Now, if I wanted to uh, look at uh, other stocks, we could definitely look at stocks that had a left right bullish pattern. And I could open those up. I could go into the commentary. I could kind of take a look at it. But it's so easy. One of the things I love about kind of the work that we've done with Steve is we've taken all of his really, really powerful patterns and just made it so you can find them. And again, like the ability to not look at 477 stocks and just focus on the ones that you like um, and have an opportunity, I think, is, is immense. So that's that's kind of how that works in Metastock. Again, here's the list of the patterns that we look for and have coded for Metastock. And here's the single bar patterns. So as part of the add-on, what you're going to get is you're going to get all of the signals. Uh, they're going to be identified on the chart for you. Of course, you can have all the indicators, and those are pre-configured to exactly what Steve likes. Um, you're going to get, uh, in total, the six explorations the expert advisor, a couple of different layouts. The layouts is just the collections and different charts. And all 36 patterns are also included with that. So we normally do that at $499 as a one-time cost. We're going to do that as $399 as a webinar special here today. We do offer that with a money-back guarantee. Now, I'm going to give you a phone number right now, but also we're um, I, I do want to talk about something that we just did in Steve that I feel is very special that we did back in December. So, But if you do just want to get the add-on, it's been very well rated. Uh, the Metastock platform's won 30 years in a row the best software in its price category because it really does do a good job of helping you understand what to do in the market and what stocks to trade and uh, all that kind of good stuff. So $399 is the offer that we're going to do here today. You can give us a call at 800 8823040. Now, one of the things that I've always admired about Steve is how good he does at training. And we actually sat down in December. If I remember right, this date could be completely wrong, but I think it was just the 3rd of December last year. And we did a, a whole, a full day boot camp on it. Uh, in that session, um, uh, uh, Steve talked about market trend analysis, the best trade patterns, 
successful trade entries, when to immediately close a trade. And one of the things that I always tell people about Steve, I mean, I, I, I've i learned so much from Steve, the, the ability for me to travel around the country and just find or learn stuff from Steve has been great. We've, we've, we've done lots of lessons. He's been probably one of, I, I consider him a friend and a mentor. But we sat down and recorded this training class um, and it was, uh, I think it was six hours. It might've been eight hours. It was great though. And um, he answered every question that came in. Uh, he, he does a really good job of that. So it was six hours of live trading. We recorded it December 3rd and you're gonna get access to those recorded sessions. What we did as part of that, it was it's $899. As part of the webinar, if you already own CPS, we're gonna give that to you at a pretty good discount, $449. If you sign up for them, you'll have access to the recordings right now, okay? So you can do that at 800, or, or you can do the add-on at 800-882-3040. You can give us a call. We've got sales guys that can help you with that. You can also visit metastock.com slash sales chat. Now, what I'm gonna do as part of the kind of the bonus that we're doing today is if you don't have either one of them, and you, maybe you don't have Metastock, maybe you're just finding out about Metastock for the first time today. If you wanna do Steve's Candle Profit Systems 2.0, that boot camp that we did, the six hour boot camp, uh, we'll give you, if you need access to Metastock, we'll give you a free month of our Metastock real time. We'll give you the free month of the Zenith data so you'll have everything you need to run with it. Uh, we'll also give you Unleash the Power of Metastock as part of it as well. So Unleash the Power of Metastock is a training disc. It's going to show you how to run all the scans and stuff like that. In addition um, to that, if you're also new to Metastock, you will get uh, what we call a white glove installation service appointment. And I think these are awesome. I've actually been sending a couple new partners here to learn how to use Metastock. But what we do for every customer that's brand new to Metastock is we'll actually sit down with them for up to two hours. It's a two hour window, answer any questions that they have, help them run any scans, anything that they need to do. And one of the things that I, uh, that I always get is really, really good feedback. If you look at some of our YouTube videos, uh, I saw a comment the other day that's like, your support team is awesome. They're a gift, we love them, but I think they do a great job. I think one of the biggest advantages, if you've ever called a software company and talked to their support desk, um, one of the things we like to brag about is we have more people on our support team than we keep in sales and marketing put together. And uh, I just think one of the biggest advantages we have is how good our people are and how good our support team is, how good of a job they do. So you get, of course, anytime you have any questions, if you want, you can call them, you can uh, chat online with them. Uh, they're open uh, during normal business hours during the week. And I, I honestly think they do a really, really good job. I may be biased, but I also think they're probably one of the best in the industry. So you can get that whole package. Uh, normally, if you bought all those pieces separately, it would cost you $1,400. You're going to get that award-winning add-on that's been rated so highly by the two different reviewers, uh, been one of our most popular add-ons. You're going to get all that training from Steve. You'll get the access to the, uh, the Metastock platform that's been rated number one for 30 years. All of that is going to be $698. Um, you can do that at 800-882-3040. Uh, you can chat in line uh, with our sales team if you have more questions, if you want to look at some charts, metastock.com slash sales chat, or you can visit us at metastock.com slash candlestick forum D. We have a couple more comments I'm going to read. Let's see. Uh, Mary says, thank you for the great info, Steve. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve, Peter. Uh, Faye says, thanks for the session. Um, Kevin says, does this system work with crypto? Absolutely. You can, you can do um, uh, Bitcoin or uh, you can use, as Steve would, as we said earlier, you can apply this to any tradable instrument and definitely um, with Metastock, you can do Bitcoin and uh, quite a few other coins as well. So uh, Feroz wants to say, no, no, does this work independent of Metastock? Thanks for the question, Feroz. Uh, do we have to buy Metastock and then this? So this trial, this package will include a trial to our real-time Metastock. Uh, Metastock is the software that we've been working on. It's the one, <clears throat> got a thing in my throat, that's been rated number one for 30 years in a row. This includes a trial to it. After the free 30 days that we're going to include with it, there is an ongoing Metastock cost. 
Um, if you're doing our end of day platform, that cost starts at $59 a month. Uh, the real time cost is about $199. And we can kind of go through all those details. But yes, Metastop, basically, the uh, the candlestick forum, uh, the candlestick profit systems add on, my mistake, is something that we've designed to go and work with the engine at Metastock. It's what we call an add on at Metastock. So, um, PT Tynes says, what is Zenith data? That's a really good question. And I'm going to give you a short answer because with Zenith, we could talk about that. Uh, in fact, we're going to do a whole one hour webinar session on it. The short answer is Zenith is an institutional quality data feed. Um, the developer of it used, uh, was Thomson Reuters, um, who has now uh, uh, sold that to the, uh, it's been through a couple owners, but it's now owned by the London Stock Exchange Group. Um, they spent a billion dollars creating it, and it's supported by Reuters News and Information, which is thousands of uh, reporters, over hundreds of different news bureaus. It's an institutional quality data feed. If you're a hedge fund, there's really two options in the market. There's the the uh, Refinitiv option and Bloomberg. And so Zenith is really kind of our name for this institutional quality feed, our white label name for it. So hopefully that helps. There's plenty of videos up on the YouTube library that'll go through Zenith, but it is a great platform. It's not like some something that you're gonna get for free from a broker. It's one of the best news providers on the planet. So uh, Anthony wants to know, is it a cloud-based system? And if not, does it run on the Mac? And that's a really good question, Anthony. Actually, when we were kind of doing some design work, we just did a brand new charting engine for Metastock. We actually looked at HTML5 and what our decision was as traders is we didn't want to use HTML5 as a way to deliver real-time data into a chart. It just doesn't work that well. In fact, some of the HTML5 providers have learn the same lesson, they're starting to create desktop apps. So it is an installation uh, on your computer. Uh, that was the best way we decided to kind of deliver data. Uh, at some point, maybe in HTML6, HTML7, that'll be better. But uh, in terms of making real-time decisions on real-time data, uh, we just decided HTML wasn't a good idea. So it is installed. It does require, it's a PC system. So it does. you can use it on a Mac but it does require that you install Windows. So, and uh, usually like um, there's some recommendations that we can give you in terms of how to do that. Um, I understand bootcamp will work and parallels will work, but before you kind of make any decisions, contact us um, at metastock.com slash sales chat so that they can give you some information about kind of what our recommendations are. So that looks like the end of the questions. So, oh, let me look at YouTube. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, Kelly, is there any questions from YouTube that we need to answer real quick? My uh, YouTube monitor, nope, there isn't. Okay. All right. So uh, again, if you haven't tried this out, you should. Give us a call, 800-882-3040. Chat online with us at metastock.com slash sales chat, or you can visit uh, metastock.com slash candlestick forum D. So uh, last thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. Lots of great questions today. I appreciate that. I appreciate all the engagement. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, Steve, I wanna uh, say thank you to him again. He's, he's a good friend of mine and one of the best business partners we've had. So we appreciate him. Um, for everybody else, stay healthy, stay well. We'll see you at the next one. Hi, Kelly Clement here from Metastock. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope you found it instructive and informative. If you did, what I'd like to invite you to do is go ahead and like and subscribe. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps us a great deal, and it helps us bring you more awesome content like today's video. So go ahead and like and subscribe, and keep on watching.